Lindsay, I went out there on kind of a limb and said, this seems like they're just queuing us up. It seems like they're getting aggressive about the language. Am I completely wrong? I, I actually very much disagree with you. I think, Good. if anything, this reminds us of the much more dismal tone that the Fed has taken regarding the overall economy as of late. Looking in those minutes, we see a continued acknowledgement of the recent weakness that we've seen in household spending, with many of the committee members concerned that that weakness will persist going forward. We also see lingering concerns regarding the strength of the U.S. dollar, low energy prices, undermining U.S. growth. We saw several officials worried that that weakness in the first quarter would carry over into the second quarter. So if anything, I think this is going to redirect the focus back to the weakness of the fundamentals in the U.S., which has been ignored as of late. And I think this weakness further justifies the Fed to remain on hold at the earliest, the early, uh, excuse me, the, the latter part of 2015, but as we have long contended, holding the Fed on the sidelines until 2016. Hey Brian, Brian could I just jump in here? Because I, I think Lindsay might be misreading something, and I, I, I think it depends on where the bar is, and I just don't think the bar is very high for a rate hike this year, and I'm agreeing with you on this, Brian, and maybe Jerry will break the tie here. And the issue is, I don't think we have to get back what we lost in the first quarter. I think if we resume in the second quarter to something resembling what has been average growth in the 2 2.5% range, that's going to be enough for the Federal Reserve. I think the presumption is one of a rate hike, and it's not going to be very hard for the data to get the Fed over the bar for where they want to go. Yeah, but, but, but well, I think it's been pretty I'll, clear Lindsay, where the bar has been set. They, they've told us that the bar is 2.3 to 2.7. So if we want to meet that lowered bar of expectations, even with a stagnant second quarter, that means we're going to have to see above 3.5% in the third and fourth quarter. And I just don't see the catalyst to keep no, that see, growth agree momentum with that. for the latter Jerry, six months of the year. Lindsay, quickly, that was the most polite disagreement ever, which I appreciate, by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I don't necessarily disagree with Lindsay, Jerry. Uh, I hear what she's saying about some of the data. The Fed, though, saying, ah, we're kind of wiping it off. What's your read on these minutes? Is there a chance that even if things aren't great, kind of agreeing with Lindsay there, the Fed almost feels like it needs to send out a floater, a test, if you will? <clears throat> well, if you look at, let's, let's take it from the equity market perspective, right? Because we're kind of, uh, we don't have a strong opinion. We don't have positions in bonds, but we do have stocks that are discounting something. And going back to Steve's point, the markets, at least from an equity standpoint, have been discounting a much slower but more consistent uh, move up in rates over the next six months. Now, whether that's uh, whether the bond market preempts that because of a of sustained move in oil prices or whether we see it in inflation, it's clear to us that there is some expectation for it. However, if you look at the group that's going to benefit most, which is clearly financials, those if you look at those charts, those haven't broken out yet. They're held back. They're restrained mostly because there was no expectation for any uh, material move here in this uh, set of minutes, and it's not likely to see one probably throughout the summer. But they, they may have been stocks, restrained, Jerry. They're telling you, pardon? They may be, have been restrained, the financials, but, I mean, year to date, a lot of them are outperforming the S&P 500 overall. I mean, if you take they, a look at the KRE have. or the XBD, I mean, they've been market leaders. At this point, what is the right, though, path for the financials, given there is an expectation that rates are going to rise, and perhaps what the market is telling us today is that there was an expectation that perhaps June was still on the table. Well, I, I guess I, I would fall back on the fact there is a substantial 20, 30, in some cases, 40 percent impact to earnings on a 100 basis point increase in the front end of the curve. That hasn't been fully discounted uh, in the market. The, the stocks have reflected some small portion of it, but if you, if you really had that conviction that you saw a substantial rate increase coming, those stocks would all be up much further than they have been so Melissa, far. They're Melissa, pacing I wanna, this. Uh, Melissa, I want to get back to this uh, uh, disagreement with Lindsay, because I think it's really important for investors to figure this out for themselves here. I really would maintain, if this economy does 2 2.5% average to middling growth over the rest of the year, I think it's going to be enough for the Fed to hike. M Lindsay, I just don't see we need a three. It would be wonderful to have. And it's even baked into some of the expectations. But I don't think we need to have above average or above trend growth. If we just stop right here and get back to where we were, it's going to be enough to get that first quarter point this year. 
Well, th there's going to have to be a lot of other improvement with just an average of 2.5% growth over the remaining nine months of the year. We're also going to have to see the Fed reasonably confident that inflation is reversing back towards that 2% growth target, or excuse me, 2% annual uh, rate target, as well as further improvement in the labor market. Remember, from the Fed's point of view, it's not just about that GDP number. We have to see underlying improvement in a plethora of sectors of the economy in order to justify a change in policy.